bid you good day. I greet you this day with a new topic for your consideration. One that you will find very useful, very practical, particularly at this time. We will entitle our discourse today Welcoming the New, Surrendering the Old. And that is a fine way to begin. For in order to welcome something which is new, something desired, desirable, at times, it is well to surrender that which is no longer needed or obsolete. The difficulty at times is discerning what that is or which of all of those items and thoughts and beliefs and things that you have accumulated that may be the one that you are willing to surrender. One of the ways to consider it is assume that you meet someone that has something of very excellent value to you, something truly desirable, perhaps a quality that you have wanted to embody for some time and somehow it has somehow eluded you. And here is someone that has it and will give it to you and all they ask for in return is for you to give them something anything that you no longer need something that you will not want back something that may even be all used up well in exchange for something of great value or great beauty you may find that it is not so difficult to surrender something of less value to you. So if you are uncertain what you are willing to surrender, perhaps begin to think again of what those things are that you would receive or what you would truly give in exchange for receiving that. And what if you were simply asked to surrender it first before receiving the new well that would not be so bad either would it this is a time of change and exchange changes bring opportunities to exchange this for that i'll give you that if you'll give me this well, in essence, that is what the Earth is saying now as well to the solar system and to the galaxy and to all of the brothers and sisters and cousins in the universe. The Earth is saying, I will exchange a time of density for a time of light, a golden age, if you like. I will reduce the amount of shadow upon the Earth and instead I will receive greater light acceleration. What the earth does, humanity does as well. <laughs> Perhaps this way I could say to you that it is rather inevitable that you may as well choose what has already been chosen, not because you do not have a choice, but particularly because you do, and particularly because you have already chosen not at an unconscious level, in fact, at a very conscious level, at a very deep and conscious, advanced and accelerated place. You chose because it was in the highest good, in the highest interest for you, for the vehicle, the human vehicle that you inhabit, the body, and for all that surrounds you environmentally, dimensionally, and like that. In essence, then, the time that you are moving into now has already been prepared for you, and long, long ago. The Golden Age, well, that is not a new term. You have known that term for a very long time. You have had much time to prepare for it to see its advance, to warm up to its idea. Much has been proposed regarding this time, what it might be like, 
and even the changes that would come quickly advancing as well. So there are few relative surprises yet. Yes, there are a few moments and such, a few shocks here and there, a few surprises yet to come. But for the most part, you can already see, you can already vision ahead. So it is time now to truly begin to adapt already to the new, to welcome it, to acknowledge it. The new is here, it is on the horizon, it is already coming, it is you, it is for you. So little cause now to deny it or hold it back or hold it at bay while you examine it, thinking that you may still choose yes or no. You have chosen, sweet ones. You have chosen. So in preparation for welcoming the new, comes our discussion for today and I offer to you some practical means, ten that I have numbered to offer to you, in order to welcome that which is new and again I say to you endorsing underscoring that it is already here. Whether you acknowledge it, whether it is visible or invisible, present or yet just brimming over the horizon, begin to know it is here, you are here. It is a time of joining, of unity, of unifying, of tying together opposites, of bringing together separations and like that. To begin with, when you awaken in the day, Right when you find yourself in the body, at the very first moment that you recognize that what you are, who you are, is in a body or is a body or is a physical being or has woken into a day or a life, at that very moment, whenever possible, pause, pause at the first opportunity and simply recognize that moment. Recognize the moment at which night joins day. Recognize the moment in which your being or that which you are finds itself in a body. Before you say, oh no, and look at the clock. Before you decide the activities that must follow in that day. Before the responsibilities come flooding to the mind and the discourse of thoughts that follows. Before then, whenever possible, Acknowledge the moment and as quickly as possible thereafter, greet the day. Greet the day. It is a new day. It is a new day and you are a new being within that day. Assure yourself you are not the same being that you were yesterday. You are not. All manner of things and thoughts have changed during the course of a day and a night. How far have you traveled in one day and one night? How far has the earth traveled in that time? How many thoughts have you had in a 24-hour cycle? How many dreams and desires have you thought or explored or dismissed? Oh no, you are not the same being as you were the day before. Acknowledge that I am new. I am new again. I am in a new body again. I am given a new opportunity again. And how fortunate am I. Greet the day, acknowledge the joining of dark and light, matter and non-matter, visible and invisible. It is worth acknowledging. You will find as we number the other items for you that in some way it also has to do with joining, with unity. I tell you now it is the theme for this time to join together those things and thoughts that have been separate or opposed to one another. Shadow and light come together at this time. Greet the day. As you do so, greet the being within you, the beingness within you. It is not who you are. It is even beyond what you are. Your beingness 
is the essential quality that you are. Subtracting all else, dissolving all else, the indissolvable aspect that you are beyond self, beyond individual, the essence, the essentialness that you are, that is your beingness. And that which is most essential remakes itself, is born again every day. And in fact, every moment were you to acknowledge moments at a time. But here we begin on the large landscape, acknowledging a day at a time. As you greet the day and acknowledge the beingness within you, your first thoughts will come forward. Whenever possible, allow these first thoughts to be gentle ones, new ones. A new thought, an original thought, is simply one that allows you to be very comfortable in the now and the next. See, it is not necessarily a thought that you have never had or would never have conceived of. It is that which allows you to be completely at ease in what you are. So it is a way of saying it is a natural thought. It is part of nature. You are part of nature. True thoughts are natural thoughts. The more that you allow this to come forward, the more that you will know that your next steps that you will take are also natural steps. The more you and your steps become one, the more quickly you will accomplish those things that you wish and the more quickly that you will move in the directions that you wish to move in. So acknowledging a new thought very gently, welcoming it, welcoming in the new day. And wherever possible, you may give yourself such imagery that may accompany these new thoughts. For instance, you may imagine yourself at the top of a very high mountain, seeing the sunrise and greeting the day in a very formal way or a ritualized way, an organic way. This imagery will allow all of you to participate in it, and your thoughts also will gradually accompany you as well, even if the last one of the last day or week or year comes from a different place within you. The imagery allows the mind to participate in the new. You see, you do not need to struggle against the mind to fight it. Oh no, the mind becomes your companion. It is along for the journey too best that you unify it, bring it into the unified field of your new thoughts. Other imagery that you may find of value perhaps is that of a seed sprouting through the ground, making its way through even a crack in a sidewalk. Perhaps that of a whale breaching as it combines air and water, bringing together the elements in joy. Perhaps that of a dolphin shimmering in the blue water as it dances in its playful nature within a pod of like kind. Whenever possible, and in favor of surrendering the old, do your best not to begin your day by reviewing your yesterday or your many yesterdays or by picking up right where you left off the day before. Perhaps that is some of the old that you can begin to surrender. The more that you greet the day as I have described, the easier it will become. That is not to say that you will not have your day's activities or your day's responsibilities. You need not say, Oh, Gaia, if you were in a human body, you would find it difficult too. Oh, yes, dear ones, I understand. The limitations of being physical, I do. 
and yet there is that which is beyond that as well. In reviewing yesterday, too quickly you begin to live yesterday. And what is taking place while you are living yesterday? While the moments and the minutes are ticking by today and you are living yesterday, who or what is living today? Can you see it does you no justice? It is not harmful per se, but it is not just either. Therefore, there will be plenty of time to take up the day's activities and responsibilities to answer the day's questions with solutions and like that. Once again, acknowledge the day as new and yourself as well. You are not the same being that entered the body yesterday as you are today. You are new each and every day. You renew yourself each and every day. The earth renews itself in the sun each and every day. No two days are ever the same upon the earth. Not for Gaia, therefore not for you. Therefore greet, acknowledge, welcome the individual nature of what you are, what you bring, what you invite, what you greet, what you do. In accelerating this process, you will see that almost naturally, some things begin to loosen their hold upon you. So step two, number two, would mean beginning to accelerate the process of letting some things go. And this is something that you can practice every day as well. Very little to do. Simply look within for a moment, look without for a moment, and acknowledge that. I, the being that I am, the new, different, unique being that I am today, releases all those things of yesterday and yesterdays that are no longer suitable, that have outgrown their usefulness, that are no longer practical, that are no longer creative, that belong to someone else and not to me, for I am new and renewed in this moment and this day. I loosen those things that are dense, concrete blocks, that have prevented me from seeing the lighter aspects, the lighter nature of my being. I loosen, I let go. I release those thoughts and things within my abilities to do so. Indeed. Step three. Whenever possible, acknowledge the bonds that you share with others. To be specific, bonds are not chains. They are bonds. They are ties. For instance, family ties are bonds. There are many that have indeed made chains of these, be they responsibilities or from the personalities or like that. But that is not what they are in truth. They are bonds that stretch across time. Here you have souls and soul contracts, matters of heredity, choices for body, karmic and dharmic responses of the soul. These also can be lightened by their acknowledgement. And so I do not say to acknowledge the responsibilities or the duties of family. Let us take care in how these words are offered. I do say to you, acknowledge simply the bonds that you share. Family, friends, bonds with the elements and the kingdoms, with your goals and ideas. 
You share a common bond with the other kingdoms of the earth. They are your cousins, your brothers, your sisters. You share genetic value with them, history with them, future with them. You breathe and share the elements, water. You drink. It makes up your body. Air. You breathe. It oxygenates your being. You are one with the elements. It is a bond you can do not without these. At the same time, do not take them for granted. Yes, they are part of your day of your life. Acknowledge them simply. You will find that as you acknowledge these bonds, they will lighten. Simply by acknowledging them. You need not do anything. Notice I do not say to you, place a call to your long lost brother, mother, father, to your estranged this or that. Oh no, not necessary at all. Simply acknowledge that there is a bond that you share. It is a common bond. It is one that you chose. It was not chosen for you. You chose it. Acknowledge that there is choice in the matter, and that where that choice was made, you made the highest and the best choice. In fact, all of them have been in the highest and the best, taking into consideration creativity, free will, to the extent that it has been granted and extended to you. A subject that we will discover. More about on another day. Will, free will, and divine will. To the degree that it is yours, acknowledge that. Acknowledge the bonds, not the chains. Bonds are invisible lines of energy that connect you here and there, highways and byways of energy. And when you acknowledge them, Well, something rather interesting and magical happens. They tend to repair themselves. They tend to move as energy does, moving blocks out of their own way, aligning themselves, regenerating, renewing themselves, simply because you have empowered them to do so. An acknowledgement is that it is an empowering. Of a moment, of a truth, of a desire, and when you empower that, you give it its own will to work in your favor, in your honor. It is a way of saying your word and your name goes before you. Something is now traveling even before you energetically, paving the way, lightening the path. And you will feel so much the better for doing something. Now we come even more into a more practical means as well. Here I tell you, eat something. At least once a week, hopefully, per indication, once per day, something that is both natural and raw. Simple in its means, and before eating it, contemplate it. Contemplate your bond with that. What if it were a simple apple? What tree? Yes, apples come from trees. What color tree? What color bark? What kind the leaf? What season the apple? What place or country? Of origin, how long the journey? How protected? What is inside? How regenerative the seeds? How long upon the earth? How deep the roots? How grand its history? Think for a moment. You may have had an apple from this very same tree earlier. In this life, or even in another, the apple, of course, is but a simple example, and you may choose as well a seed or a nut, a vegetable or a fruit. 
Taste it. Taste it. Before you munch it down. Taste it. Employ all of your taste buds. Discern all of its quality. Perhaps do so with your eyes closed. Something that is both natural and raw, because that is what you are as well. Acknowledge that you are that. You are a natural being that has found itself in many forms. At many different times, you also have roots that go deep. How many trees have come together that you have come forward now in the body or the time that you are in as well? How natural a being are you? How far have you traveled in your journey to find yourself where you are now? There is a taste. As well to your being, it has a flavor. Life has a certain flavor to it, unique each one, and you are that as well. And when you acknowledge those things that are both natural and raw, at least per week, per day, you will see that it will have wondrous effects upon you. Perhaps you will choose to do so with more than one item, more than once per day. You will find the benefits I tell you nearly miraculous, particularly as often as you lend your consciousness to it as well. And as we continue, then we stay with the senses. Another subject that we will shortly explore in much more detail: the meaning of all of the different senses. Oh yes, we will explore this soon. Number five on the list is do something each day to develop your senses as well. For the sake of this unfoldment, our topic for today, we will keep it rather simple with the five basic senses. In our next discussion, we will take it much beyond that. Sight. What do you see? What do you see? Look forward. Look to the side. Use your peripheral vision. What do you see peripherally? What do you see that is in focus or out of focus? What do you see with your eyes open? What do you see when they are closed? What do you see when completely closed tightly? They roll back in your head. What are they looking at? What do you see? Are they your eyes still? Perhaps take a few steps forward with your eyes closed. A few steps back with your eyes closed. Notice how the very first thing you will want to do is find your balance. Why lose your balance so quickly? Something else to consider. See how, as soon as you close your eyes, your hands want to reach out and touch something—a wall, a chair. How you want to lean. Perhaps take a moment, and do not then reach with the hands, for it is only the sight that we are exploring. Stand for a moment or so with your eyes closed. Are you standing straight? Are you leaning? Can you tell? Are you rocking? It is very interesting to note when you remove a sense how all of the others. Instantly have a voice as well. Touch a few things with your eyes closed. Feel them. Feel something uniquely and differently. What does a wall feel like? Perhaps another item, even one that you know intimately. Something that has been on your desk or your dresser. For so long that you barely take note of it, hold it with your eyes closed. See if it does not become a different item. See if it will speak to you or share something with you. 
that you had not felt or thought in some time. Perhaps it will even become conscious for you in a moment much more than an inanimate object. Smell something natural. Use your sense, your scent, scent something, a very organic aspect of you and something that has truly almost lost its ability within humanity. You see, you still have the sense of smell. You can smell something wonderful cooking in the kitchen. You can smell something that is distasteful, dishonorable. But to scent something, to smell it out, to scent it out, as if it were your only ability, as if with only the scent as an intuitive nature, if that were your only sense, what would you do? How interesting a thought to consider. So to scent something is truly to bring it into being with only the sense of smell or scent. Hmm. I tell you that all of your senses are rather creative things. So they become taken for granted. They work together as one, as part of your being, your automatic nature. Your mechanical nature. But even individually, each one could do much more for you than at present. So allow yourself then to scent something natural, something organic, the earth, a flower, water. Even water has a unique scent, you know. Even your own perfume or odor, even that has a great deal of knowledge and wisdom in it. And appreciate those for what they are for their earthiness, for their naturalness, for their organicness. It is what you are as well. Aside that your body is mechanical in nature, it is also organic, made of the finest material that the earth has to offer. Take a moment to appreciate that. If the moment presents itself, and you are able to do so, turn everything off and listen only to yourself for a few moments. With lights off and electronics off and all the fanciful tools of the day, turn everything off. Or place yourself in an environment in which there is no everything to turn off. Listen to yourself for a few moments. You will see that beyond the thoughts, beyond the chatter in the mind, there is a self. Listen to what the self has to say. Listen to what your self has to say. It has a very distinct voice. It is not the voice of channeling. It is not the voice of meditation, not the voice of prayer, not the voice over. It is the self. It is very unique. Listen to your self. And the self has a very unique frequency as well. You can hear it just above, beneath or beyond the daily buzz of the day, beyond the hum in your ears, beyond the din of the day, there is a frequency, there is a vibration. It has a voice, it has a truth, it carries, it uplifts, it is a symphony, it is a rhapsody, it is a concert, it is a poem. 
It is all of this, all in one tone, in one frequency. Give yourself that gift. And here is another place in which you may insert or give or return something that is no longer needed. Perhaps it is an old voice within you that no longer serves you. That voice that always seems to complain, that one, you may wish to give it to the self and say, I much prefer the sound of this moment and not that one. Perhaps there is another voice, one that is not yours but was lent to you long ago to strengthen you, to uplift you. Perhaps you borrowed it from another or another's truth. It is a fine time to give back one or as many voices within you that no longer suit or serve. And you may ask yourself this. Does this suit a purpose? A small purpose or a greater purpose? Does it suit or does it serve? If it does, then you may decide keep it or not keep it. It will be your choice. But if you cannot answer, does it suit or does it serve? Your answer may be in that already. So then, beyond that, listen to something or someone without deciding whether you agree or not with what they say or how they say it. Listen to something or someone in a very objective and observant way. You see? It seems rather simple, but what if there was a bee nearby? Well, you can be objective and observant, but if it comes a little bit too close and there is a fear that it will sting you, well, already you are not objective and observant. It seems easier said than done. Listen to those that particularly you do not agree with, if you like. See how long you can remain objective and observant. See, it is not the same as being reverent. You are not being asked to agree at all. Not to judge, only to observe, as uniquely interesting. Notice how difficult it is to do that, even if you were to take yourself to an art gallery. I agree with the artist. I do not agree with the artist. And why is this hanging here? And who would pay for this or that? And if this one calls themselves an artist, well, mine would certainly do. And the same with a book. And the same with the opinion of another. And on and on. That is why the importance of this which I offer be objective and observant. You are not being asked for an opinion, not a vote, not even a thought. To be observant means not even to generate a thought in that direction. To be objective means no opinion, no thoughts. You are there in sharing. It is a moment of unity. You can begin, if you like, with those things that are rather simple and see if you can work your way up from there. And while you are being objective and observant, you will notice that you can even listen to the pause between your thoughts, between words, between ideas. What exists between that pause? Worlds, I tell you. Imaginative worlds and creative worlds. In that pause, it is not a silent pause. It is that which is a doorway, a threshold to many, many other thoughts and things. Worlds beyond this one exist just in that pause. 
Now I tell you as well to begin to think and act and move omnidirectionally, omnidimensionally as a matter of fact. Well, how do you do that? For the most part, you are simply concerned with moving forward. You are doing your best to move forward without looking back. Oh, Gaia, isn't that enough for now? Of course it is. But at the same time, you wish to accelerate your thoughts, your movements. You wish to accelerate into being your desires, into bringing them forward. When is it coming? When am I going? Where am I going? Well, part of the reason it all appears to be taking so long to manifest those things that you desire is that within the third dimension you can only move so fast. What of those things in the third dimension? You can only walk so fast, run so fast, drive so fast, fly so fast. Before what? Resting or refueling? Rethinking? And by the time all that takes place, you are not certain you want it to go at all. And so you are already rethinking the entire process, which is why it appears that you take one step forward and two back, or two forward and one back. But there is the one. It is the cadence that moves you both forward and backward. My suggestion, therefore, in welcoming the new is to begin to think and act and move omnidirectionally, omnidimensionally. And again comes the question, how? Well, first comes simply the pure thought that acknowledges that you are indeed already an interdimensional being and that a great part of the physical nature of you simply happens to reside in the third dimension. Your physical nature happens to reside in the third dimension. However, a much greater part of your being that exists beyond the physical is and already exists dimensionally, multi-dimensionally. Now, the moment that you begin to decide in what location, on what dimension you are, well, now you are creating coordinates. Coordinates, directions. Now you have loaded it into your GPS and now you are only moving again in one direction to that place, to that advanced place or that next stop. So you are not multidimensional. You are only now moving to the next spatial dimension. Now this certainly is an accomplishment. It is an advancement and acceleration from the third dimension but still limiting as compared to my suggestion, which is to think, act, and move omnidirectionally and dimensionally. Think, act, and move takes place all at once. The thought, the movement, and the action. An action and a movement are not the same. The action makes the movement possible. The thought makes the action possible. The movement underscores the rightness of the action. So now you have a trinity. This particular trinity creates a kind of aliveness. It excites your electrical nature as opposed to your magnetic nature. The magnetic nature keeps you more in the third dimension, rooted to the earth very appropriately. The electrical nature travels much more quickly. This particular trinity then activates another system within you that allows you to be, act and do more than what you are doing in the moment. In the same way that we might acknowledge that there is a, a thought and a higher thought, 
there is a way to be in a dimension and a way to be in it in a more accelerated fashion. So as you accelerate the idea of being by joining together this trinity, invisible doorways open and barely without knowing you step into them, you accelerate into them, better put. There is no danger in this. You cannot get lost or stuck in another dimension, for you are quite rooted for now in the body, and the body is very located in place and time in the third dimension. But what you are, the essential part of your being, can be excited, accelerated, and move more quickly dimensionally. This is a practice that you begin to create within you. If you were to say in this stead, but Gaia, how? Again, I tell you, it is by joining, thinking, acting, and moving. If, without giving it much thought, you begin to spin, for instance, to spin upon your own axis, that is an approximation of it. When you spin, counterclockwise, you become more electric in nature. And as you do so, the movement, the actions, and the thoughts come together. Here associated in what I offer to you, there is science that is of value as well. Science that those that study the nature of the Sufis long ago understood. So in their exercises and tenets you would find some structure to what I offer to you here. But here, very simply put, with desire and intention, you become omnidirectional and dimensional. A very important step that requires very little thought. In fact, the more thought that you give it, the more difficult it becomes. I tell you next that in this same idea, an exercise in which you create greater balance in your life is important. Now, this be a physical exercise, but one of thought as well. Earlier, when we spoke of to have with eyes closed a few steps in one direction or the other, it is also an exercise in balance. And so take a moment to see how balanced you are by closing your eyes. Notice if you are swaying to one direction or another. If you like, you may do this in front of a mirror. Stand with your eyes closed just for a few moments, as long as a minute or two minutes, if at all possible. Two minutes, what a very short time is that. It will seem an eternity to you with your eyes closed and standing. The moment that you open your eyes, look in the mirror and see if indeed you are leaning in one direction or not, forward or back or to the side. To what stance? Are you balanced or imbalanced? Notice if during that time in which you were standing with your eyes closed, you needed to reach to hold something or felt that you needed to sit so that you did not fall. Notice if you were being pulled to the earth more or felt very much pulled to the heavens instead. Continue the exercise as well, even with your eyes open. With your feet together, place your hands out to the side as far as you can. What is beyond your fingertips? Can you feel your fingertips stretching further and further? Where do your fingertips reach? What do they touch? Are they in balance? What finger has more weight to it or seems more important in the moment? Does it feel as if there is a complete circuit within you linking all of you together, even when your hands are duly outstretched? Can you feel the energy just beyond the fingertips? What does it feel like? Can you receive it? Can you touch it? Feel it? Merge with it. 
Continue with the exercise as well. Hands at your sides. Lift one foot, one knee, then one leg. Each time noting whether you are in proportional balance or not. With your left side, with your right side. Notice if your thoughts are more in balance when you perform the exercise with one or the other. Are your thoughts more positive about you or what you are doing? Are you enjoying the exercise when it is with one foot up, but when you switch to the other side, notice if you begin to say, Oh, how silly is this? Why am I doing this? I have better things to do with my time than this. Notice your thoughts regarding this. And if your thoughts do turn toward the ridiculous, perhaps it would be a good time as well to find something old and ridiculous about your thoughts that you are willing to surrender in that moment as well. You see, any time you find yourself out of balance in thought, mind, deed, action, movement or balance, it is almost as if it is a moment out of time and in that moment out of time you may take something out or receive something in. Now, for the most part, you have become adept at receiving. Thank you very much. I'll receive that gift or that very good idea, that creative notion, that suggestion. But to release something, give me that. You don't need it any longer. Give it over. Give it away. It is not always as simple. So in these out-of-time moments in which the senses are at your disposal, offering themselves to you in a greater capacity because you are acknowledging them. These are small windows of opportunities to easily surrender something old. And now you begin to see the method in madness, if you will call it that, that I am offering to you. Very simple ways to welcome the new and surrender the old. Another simple exercise that I would offer to you as well, I will call the dissolution exercise, in which you simply contemplate those things that are solid in other ways. What if you were to simply sit back and contemplate your desk? Hmm. Well, it is very solid, very regal, yes, made of dense wood, well crafted or constructed, what it will be, yes, it has an elemental value to it, yes. Molecules, yes. Atomic structure, subatomic particles, ah, pure energy. As you begin to subtract the movement that it has made before it became a desk, eventually there will be nothing there. You will have dissolved it. It will still exist in your thoughts, in your mind, as pure energy. It is still there, energetically speaking. But perhaps it is less dense now. And you may perform this exercise, a very simple one, with almost everything. You simply begin to lighten it by acknowledging it, beginning right where it is. Acknowledge its construction all that helped it come into being, human in origin, man-made, natural, organic, what it is, and then begin very objectively as well to see it as something else. If it is made of wood, well, then it came from a tree. It is just as easily a tree standing before me. Just as easily one could strip away the bark. Just as easily it was a young branch, a limb, a leaf, at one time, a root, a seedling. You begin to take away all that it is to see what it was or could be. It becomes elemental, molecular. It becomes particles of energy. And then perhaps you will take it upon yourself to do the same with you. A dissolution exercise. You will see that you will not reduce yourself to nothing. Oh no, you will engage and enlarge yourself to all things. 
You will not lose your identity. You will gain a unity. You will find that you are indeed a unified being within a unified field. You will not lose your thoughts, your memories or your personality. They will become more than that. They will become enriched in the process. Next to last, I say to you, find the wise one within. Much earlier, we spoke of greeting the being within you. Well, there is a wisdom keeper there too. There is always a wise one within you. The wise one knows, knows, knows you, knows what, knows this, knows that. Wisdom knows yesterday. Wisdom knows tomorrow. Wisdom is without beginning, without end, unfathomable, infinite and eternal. The wise one is and always has been within you. The wise one has accompanied you everywhere, regardless of whether you have taken counsel with it or not. The wise one is one of the I voices within you. Oh, but what a small I and what a wise I worth listening to. Find the wise one within you at least once per day. Take a moment and look for it. Where is it? Listen for one moment's wisdom. You will see that there is at least a pearl a day, one pearl of wisdom. Acknowledge that part of your being, your being within you, your being your essence, your essential self, that which you are, means not that you cannot find wisdom elsewhere or from another's wise one. Whom do you believe that you are reading or listening to or joining with when you gather with others? You go knowing that their wise one will come forward and offer something. Well, your wise one also has much to offer to you, to the day, to the family of man, to the earth and to this life. Therefore, acknowledge the wise one. Lastly, our number 10 for the day. Know when to be alert and when to be in repose. To be in repose does not mean to relax. It means to be in repose. To repose is to lean into yourself. Yes, there is a relaxed nature to it. It is to be at ease with yourself, at ease in the moment, at ease in the body. To be in repose is something that you do within. Yes, it has a certain look or attitude of relaxing on the outer plane, but repose first takes place within. You lean into yourself. What do you look like when you are not on guard, when you are not protecting or overprotecting yourself, when you are not defending your thoughts or your ideas, when you are not judging others or yourself? is not emptiness, it is repose. Repose is the response of the soul within you. Know when you are alert. Alert means it is a moment in which you can learn, discover. To be alert simply means to be at the ready. Again, it is not on guard not prepared to face the world yet another day. To be alert simply means to acknowledge the very best of yourself and to bring it forward into alert status, to be ready for the day, ready for the next thought, ready to give, ready to receive, ready to share, alert for what the next moment will bring. It is to be instinct, to be instinctual. 
There is an intuitive nature to you that you are beginning to acknowledge, again a subject that we will speak more of, and then there is an instinctual nature within you. Earlier I have said that humanity has lost its ability to scent the moment, to use the scent, and instead has reduced it to the sense of smell. To be in alert means to be sent, to be in initiative. You become the initiative, the initiate, alert, Instinct takes over. Instinct. And not the opposite of that, but when you are most comfortable in your being, then you are also in repose. These two are not opposites. They are companions associated with one another, relevant to one another, complementary to one another. And I give these to you in ways that have not been considered for some time. Now then, practical is our discourse for the day. I urge you not to set these aside as words only, that you will consider next day, next time, at the next cycle when resolutions or promises to self are more appropriate. Let it be a daily occurrence. If you can do one, so be it, ten, batter, seven, just. Practical measures. Welcome the new sweet ones. I do this each day with you, receiving you, welcoming humanity each and every moment. I too surrender that which is old, obsolete, so be it. Until the next moment, I greet you, welcome you, honor you, and surrender you to the next. I bid you good day.